draft analysis for the Soul Dew Association or SDA Season 1. So this is a league that is ran by TD Towers or Absolute. Definitely go be sure to check him out in the description down below as well as all of the other coaches. So I'm going to be right up front and honest with you guys. I genuinely believe that this team that I am about to reveal to you guys may just be the best team I have ever drafted. Definitely the best team I've drafted uh, in Gen 8, I think. Without a doubt, I've drafted a few good teams in my Gen 7 days, but just based on my play style and how I enjoy playing Pokemon these days, I think this is by far the best team I've drafted this generation. So be just just get ready, dude, because this season is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. I am very, very excited to show you guys this squad. Now, uh, before we go ahead and get into um, stuff and things, uh, we should go over the draft order and some rules for the league. So. Uh, it was a, it's a 12 coach league, uh, so we, there will be also be 11 uh, weeks. So we'll be playing every other coach in the league, which should be a lot of fun. I haven't done a league like this in a very, very long time. So we will actually be playing everyone 11 games. Let me know what you think my record is going to be. And once you see all the Pokemon that are on this team, let me know what you think the kill leader is going to be. And trust me, guys, it's going to be our first pick. That should give you a little bit of a hint. Not too much of a hint, but should give you a little bit of a teaser, a little bit of a hint on what our team might be built around. So <laughs> I mentioned this a little bit in my uh, draft analysis uh, for UPBA, and I wasn't really in love with that draft. And I probably talked about it a little bit in my academy analysis as well, which was completely rushed, and I really am not uh, happy with how that um, analysis turned out. So uh, I wasn't really happy with that team. So I ended up joining a third league. I didn't really want to do three leagues because I wasn't really happy with either of my two drafts. Uh, I'm more happy with my academy draft than it was my upper draft. So that's how I got here. And I'm, I'm very happy to be here. So uh, we had 1,200 points to pick 11 Pokemon. And the points ranged from, I believe, uh, 180 down to 20. It was similar to BBR tiers. Uh, that's what the uh, admins of the league based it off of where the BBR tiers this past season. And we, you know, rearranged a few things that we may or may not have disagreed with. So, yeah, it's really all we got, I think. Uh, other thing, I guess, would be draft order. I said I was going to talk about that, but I don't remember where I picked. I guess I can look because I'm literally staring at Discord. Uh, I, I, obviously, I picked in the middle. I picked at 9 out of 12, which, come on, dude. If you're going to give me a wheel pick or, like, a bottom of the, you know, order pick, at least give me, like, something actually in the bottom three. Nine is just like a slap in the face because like there's 10, 11, and 12 beneath me. So it's like there's four. It's just, I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm like fourth in the, in the you know, wheel again, which isn't great. Like you give me top three at least. Like what the fuck? Uh, nine is basically middle. I, I might as well be six, right? Might as well be. <laughs> no. Um, but thankfully, thankfully, there was a uh, Pokemon that uh, I heavily, very much so, wanted to build my entire team around. And wouldn't you know, we were able to get this Pokemon with our first pick at number nine. So, without further ado, get it, do, because Soul Do is so. Oh, God, I'm fucking. I'm not like other men. Oh, Jesus. Someone love me. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, with our first pick, guys. Guys. We got ourselves a fucking fish. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We dropped the Dracovish round one. I am so freaking happy to finally use this thing in a real league. I had it in a showdown league that I, I played one game in, and that was the last uh, showdown league I ever joined. Well, till this point. Uh, because someone literally wasted 40 minutes of my fucking day clicking recover every other fucking turn recover and protect is it was the most miserable thing ever so i wasn't really able to actually enjoy having dracovish on the team so now that we're back you know in a uh a a, a meta or a play style of culture on on wi-fi i can actually enjoy using dracovish again and i am so damn happy now a lot of people will tell you dracovish is a bad pokemon and then if you lose to dracovish you're bad those people are stupid those people are idiots those people have no fucking clue what they're talking about all right Dracovish is a very, very good Pokemon, just based on the fact that if your opponent does not have a Water Absorb Pokemon, they you just get a fucking kill. Now, granted, 
you know, there are ways to play around it. You can offensively check at Dracovich, you know, much easier than you can defensively check at Dracovich. You know, that's 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 a thing, you know, that's that's worth mentioning. However, I don't care, dude. I've been wanting to use Dracovich forever. Finally got to use my fucking fish. We're about to fishy boy run this entire goddamn league, and it's gonna be a great time because spoiler alert, people, not a lot of water absorb Pokemon got drafted, so this is about to be free as fuck. Alright? I'ma be a little bit cocky. I'ma tell you right now. If you answer anything other than Dracovish being the kill leader, you know, I asked you that a few minutes ago. If you answer anything other than Dracovish, you're just wrong. Dracovish is getting like at least, at least, at least six kills. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot of kills. It's getting at least six, okay? At 11 games, it's getting at least six. Is that setting the bar low? Yes, and purposely so, because listen, dude, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not great at Pokemon, but Fish is great. And why think when the game does all the work for you why should i have to try why should i have to put effort into team building and to other stuff when i can just like fucking fishy boy rand and just kill everything dude that that's what we're here for so one of the main checks to drinking fish is uh is the ability water absorb or water immunities well people there are exactly and yes i did look this up there are exactly 17 Pokemon, they get water immune abilities, not counting Dracovish himself, because obviously we have Dracovish and that takes one of them off the board. There are 17 Pokemon that get water immunity abilities in Galardex. 17. Quagsire, Seismitoad, Volcanion, Araquanid, Mantine, Arctivish, Lantern, Vaporeon, Jellicent, Lapras, Maractus, Politoed, Polyrath, Gastrodon, Cordilly, Heliolisk, Jinx, and Toxicurk. Yes, I just named all of them. You know a Pokemon that beats pretty much every single one of those? Now, I'll give you Toxicroak, maybe not, and maybe not Jinx in some matchup. But you know a Pokemon that really does just shit on every single one of those Pokemon for the most part? Fucking Rillaboom. We were able to get Rillaboom with our second pick, and listen. Shay had this core in uh, UPA, and it was absolutely disgusting. It was the most difficult thing I had ever prepped for. And yeah, yeah that that's not an exaggeration. And I, 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 had, to, I had to try it, man. I had to try it. So... Went out and got myself a Rillaboom. Now, if you've been around this channel for a minute, I've been hyping up Rillaboom for so fucking long, dude. I used it in um, Academy Season 3. But that was before Grassy Glide existed. I have not got to use this thing since um, then. I spam this thing on the ladder all the fucking time when I play ladder. I love Rillaboom. It's my favorite Gen 7 or Gen 8, excuse me, Pokemon, both design wise and just, you, you know, fun wise. It was Grim Snarl for a while, but Grim Snarl's not that fun. Uh, it's more annoying, but I, I still do love Game Snarl, but uh, Rillaboom is definitely my favorite uh, Gen 8 Pokemon, so very excited to be able to use this guy once again. Grassy Glide is just so fucking spammable, dude, with Grassy Surge obviously setting up the terrain. It's so damn strong, it's so brainless, and it literally removes uh, the best check to Dracovish. Almost every single one of them. Like I said, I'll give you Toxicroak and maybe Jinx, but one, ain't nobody drafting Jinx, period, and two, ain't nobody drafting Toxicroak unless they draft in Rain, for the most part. And even then, you know, Earth, or not Earthquake, I guess High Horsepower would be the proper movie, like or Tantrum, whichever one. Um, yeah, I guess High Horsepower. Okay, just wanted to make sure. So yeah, it doesn't really beat either of them, but, you know, I, I just give you the benefit of the doubt that it can. All right. Drake, uh, Rillaboom literally smacks the water immunities that, or just water types in general that have, you know, that fish air quote struggles with. So yeah, it, it's just a perfect offensive pairing. And like I said, with Dracovish, why should I have to think when I could just have the game do the work for me by just clicking a button? And that's what Rillaboom does. Now, next up, um, you know, still types are a little bit of an issue. And um, so I guess I should have a fucking tissue. And, uh, you know, we're already forming a nice little uh, fire, water, grass core. We already have the water and the grass portion of that. We also have a dragon type as well. So, we're, you know, we're forming our cores. We're being good little draft league players. We're checking our, you know, take taking things off the checklist and you know things you like to have so my third pick uh we already you know blew quite a decent bit of our budget admittedly you know we're, we're we're not we're not exactly being um frugal with our spending not that i really care so with our next pick i went ahead and said fuck it dude and i took victini so we literally blew half our budget on three pokemon but look at the three pokemon dude show me a better more offensive firewater grass core than dracovish rillaboom victini you can't, dude. You, you, you just can't. So, we already have Fishy Boy Ren. We have Grassy Glide. And now we have fucking V-Create, dude. What Switch is in? What Switch is in? Victini is a Pokemon that I have not used in so damn long. 
I don't think I, I don't know if I've ever actually used Victini. If I have used Victini, I don't know. I, it, it probably wasn't uh, on an upload league. I feel like I have used Victini in a league before. I just don't remember when. I don't know. Someone go back and look for me. Someone tell me if I've used Victini. I just, I'm sure shit. I'm gonna go watch my old content. I barely. I don't. Why would you watch my content, dude? Why would anyone do that to themselves? Anyway, Victini, fantastic offensive Pokemon. V create. There are no switch ins. Fuck your flash fire. I have a Dracovish. All right, dude. These three Pokemon break so perfectly for each other. They remove each other's checks so damn well. And just the combination of these three Pokemon is going to be so effing fun. I cannot wait to start playing games with this team. Um, so yeah, Victini, unbelievable coverage. Uh, not the strongest thing in the world, only base 100, but the fact that it has this just such strong moves that, you know, it can kind of make up for it. And it's a great mix attacker, obviously being uh, base 100 across the board. Decent bulk as well, can usually live any one hit. That's not like a boosted uh, super effective move. So yeah, Victini, fantastic. Great U-turn Pokemon, you know, just keeping up momentum for, you know, getting Drake of Vision and whatnot. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, I'm, I'm so happy, dude. I'm so happy with how this team turned out. I can't, I can't wait to start using this team. Anyway... Next up, um, you know, we're, we're not the fastest team in the world. That is, this is one thing I will, I will go ahead and note. Like, we don't have a lot of great speed. Obviously, Victini, decent speed tier, uh, base 100. It's okay, you know, it's a good start. Uh, Rillaboom obviously has priority with, uh, with, uh, you know, Grassy Glide and whatnot. And 85's not a bad speed tier either. And then Dracovish has Sand Rush. So we, we are not, you know, we're not a super slow team. But we could definitely, you know, use a faster Pokemon and, yeah, a little bit of support for, you know, maybe we maybe we don't want to run Choice Scarf Dracovish one week. Or maybe, you know, Rillaboom just has a really bad matchup. Maybe my opponent has 17 steps of Breezers or something. Maybe we just can't bring Rillaboom. And we need to slow stuff down. So we you know ourselves a Pokemon that's got a little bit of speed on it. And how about some sticky webs as well? So with our next pick, we went ahead and grabbed Rabombi. So yeah, we're we're kind of blowing through our budget early, but again, again, just the Bromby with this team, who the hell cares? It gives me a fairy type, which granted, not exactly, you know, a bulky fairy type. It has decent spadef, not gonna lie. 70 is not awful, it's, it's not great either. But it gives me a fantastic speed tier, base 124. It gives me one of those elite speed tiers, because if you don't have a Pokemon that's above base 115, your team sucks and it automatically loses to any team ever that has a Pokemon above base 115. That it, You just have to have Pokemon that are faster than that or you're bad and your team sucks. God, I cannot believe two years later I'm still referencing that and no one gets it, but that's okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, Rabambi, fantastic web setter, obviously great fairy type, you know, not great fairy type, but it's really fun. Sets up webs and like web support for the first three. Do I need to say anymore, dude? It's Rabambi. It's a good fairy type. Quiver Dance is fun. Stun Spore's annoying as shit. U-turn again for momentum. Can aromatherapy if I needed to, like, bruh, 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 bruh. I don't, I don't really feel like I need to explain why this is such a good pick, but yeah, there you go. So. At this point, I realized that uh, I only have 500 points left for uh, seven Pokemon, so I should probably start looking for some value in some lower tiers. So I went ahead and I, you know, scoured the scoured the market for for something that might be good value, you know, a solid, uh, you know, solid pick for for not a lot, you know, trying to trying to crunch my budget, you know. Uh, what's what's the term? Balance. Your checkbook or whatever i don't fucking know i don't, I don't do money anyway um <laughs> with our next pick uh i got 60 point alolan persian which i thought was an absolute steal uh gives me another solid speed tier base 115 gives me a dark type so i at least have something for psychic types so yeah that's nice uh, they, they literally can't touch the you know the, the, the shitty kitty with you know their psychic moves but they can do other dirty things to us so yeah psychic types still suck i still hate them so but we got ourselves a nice dark type to help deal with that another really good speed tier fur coat is broken technician is also a uh, pretty solid ability but you know the big selling point here was parting shotting into dracovish need i say more or parting shotting into rillaboom or parting shotting into a sand setter for dracovish potentially i don't know we haven't got there yet but uh yeah dude uh shitty kitty's really solid great fast taunt user parting shots really fun um yeah good knockoff user yeah, it's just a really solid Pokemon and was really good value for 60 points. I really could have passed that up. So 
Next up, uh, we have 460 points left for six Pokemon. So yeah, we're, we're, we're really, we're really kind of not budgeting ourselves. Well, we, we, we made up for it with the Persian pick, but uh, I was, you know, really trying hard to debate what I wanted to do for a sand core. Obviously, I want to get a sand setter for Dracovish just because that would be even more fun with it. So I'm like, I could go the Gigalith route. That would be pretty cool. But if I'm going the Gigalith route, I might as well go full blown sand and try to get Excadrill as well. And it was at this round, I'm like, okay, but if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do it, I need to take Excadrill now and figure out the rest later. I could get Excadrill and Gigalith, and that would have been uh, 280 points. So I would have had 180 for the last four Pokemon. So I'm like, okay, I probably shouldn't go Excadrill. So let me just you know look through. Let me find a good ground type. Oh. Huh, yeah, we're really are we're already really making this team just just a just a team of button clickers, right? Oh, that, that thing's cheaper than Excadrill by 40 points, but it's still really fucking strong and provides me utility in a different area that is super important important for a team to have. Oh that that's a that's the perfect fit for this team if we're not going Excadrill. So uh Yeah, we went ahead and took Nido King. Um <laughs> Listen, dude, we're, we're just out here to kill all of the things and all the stuff. Nido King gives me a, a ground type, which is a very important type to have. Obviously, it also gives me a grounded poison type, which is one of the also most important types to have. Because if you, if you don't have a grounded poison type, you're going to lose the T-Spike stacking. And it's just not fun for anyone. It also gives me my own T-Spikes to click. T-Spikes 3 attack Nido King is so fucking good because Nido King forces switches so easily you can get a T-Spike up for free. Same thing with Stealth Rocks because that, that is the one weakness of this team I will go ahead and spoil. Uh, we don't have Great Hazard Setter, we have Nido King and one other Rock Setter, so it's a little bit rough in terms of Stealth Rocks, but who gives a shit when you're just killing everything anyway? Like, Focus Sashes really aren't going to save you because this team is stupid, has a lot of priority and just a lot of Pokemon that are going to kill you anyway, so fuck it. Uh, but yeah, dude, Nido King, super fucking strong, grounded poison type, uh, Shear Force is broken, uh, T-Spikes, T-Spike Absorber, Stealth Rocker, unbelievable coverage, another good taunt user, it is the same speed tier as Rillaboom, but with webs and the fact that I don't fucking care, and the fact that Rillaboom is going to be clicking Grassy Glide most of the time anyway, which is priority, the, the, the similar speed tiers don't really, uh, matter, in my opinion, especially, specifically for those two Pokemon. With Rillaboom, speed tiers don't really matter because, like I said, you're going to be clicking, um, you're going to be clicking, what's it called? Uh, da, 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 the thing I just said, Grassy Glide most of the time anyway, which is priority. So next up, uh, this is one of the Pokemon, uh, I ended up making a few post-draft transactions. So I originally had, what did I originally have? I guess I can go check the chat. We're already making this a longer video anyway. I originally had Heliolisk, Machamp, and Delibird, and uh, that was because I wanted to get Cryogonal on the team. Cryogonal got sniped uh, from me round 10, so I, you know, just kind of, you know, took some dumb shit from my, or no, it got sniped from me, yeah, it got sniped from me before I picked round 10, because it was going back up the order, that's right, um, it got sniped from, from me, literally the pick, right before me, uh, so I just took some dumb shit with my last two picks and then fixed the team afterwards, uh, I wanted Cryogonal because it would have been nice for free shine, why not, so I ended up, um, dropping Lisk, um, a champ and Delia bird and I picked up the you know three Pokemon two of which we're about to talk about uh, or no I just realized okay yeah. um, I picked up uh, the Pokemon we're about to talk about and I uh, picked up you know two others that we'll talk about here in a second obviously but uh, this Pokemon specifically was one of the Pokemon that I suggested be moved up a tier uh, this Pokemon was 60 points for some fucking reason and I think it is objectively better than its other forms in the same tier. That should go ahead and spoil it. So with our next pick, we took Rotom Fan, which again, at 60 points, I thought was uh, just undervalued as hell. I think Rotom Fan is objectively better than uh, Rotom Frost. I don't think there's really any arguing that because Blizzard doesn't fucking hit. And I think it's also better than uh, uh, Ghost Rotom as well because I don't know, yeah, I, just, I personally think Ghost Rotom is trash, um, but that's just me. I think Rotom Fan is uh, the, the one, it, obviously it's Rotom Wash and then Rotom Heat. Those are like your your top two. And then uh, Rotom Mo is, you know, significantly below those two. And then I think next is Rotom Fan and then the other two are just garbage. Uh, <laughs> but Rotom gives me an Electro type, which is nice. It gives me another um, ground immunity with uh, obviously Levitate as well as being a bird. So that's pretty cool. Gives me removal. 
And it's just a, a good, annoying Pokemon, dude. Rotom is really fun. I don't really get to use Rotoms all that often. So it's going to be fun to use one. And I, I think it actually fits really well and plays a really solid role on this team. Like I said, removal, which is always nice to have. It's our, it's our first uh, removal option to this point, which isn't great, but we'll make do. Listen, dude, if I'm clicking removal in a game, that means uh, shit's not dying. So that means I'm probably going to lose that game anyway. So <laughs> it'll be fine. It'll be fine. But yeah, Rotom, the bulky, annoying pivot. We all know what Rotom is doing at this point. I don't really feel like I need to explain Rotom too much. But yeah, great electric type, ground immunity fucking bulky asshole it's it's a road next up we went ahead and grabbed the blade so this was not one of the transaction pokemon the next two will be though no that's a lie two of them. whatever it doesn't fucking matter uh anyway the blade gives me a still type gives me a ghost type as well which are just two solid types to have um it's not the best still type in the world because uh it has really really shitty spit up but because it's uh fizz stuff is so high that coupled with an EV that you can oftentimes get away with running um, just really spit off heavy uh, investments and you know getting away with that most of the time to take your moon blast and whatnot because this is one of my I mean I have Victini as well as Neo King that can take fairy hits so we're not super concerned with fairies uh, it's not a great fairy killer but we have Neo King that can help with that so yeah it, it's just a really you know solid low tier cheap steel type there wasn't really many other good options I uh, could not get Steelix. I want to. I really want to try Steelix. I mentioned it in a lot of my draft analysis videos, but I, I would really like to try that Pokemon soon. So, yeah, hopefully we can get on that. Uh, but yeah, the Blades, it's decent. Um, Sword Stance, Shadow Sneak, if you chip a team down, can win games. Uh, also gets close combat now, which is just cool. Iron Head's nice. Uh, but unfortunately, No Guard is really a uh, double-edged sword. See what I did there? Fucking God, I'm not like other men. I'm so fucking funny. Jesus. Uh... <laughs> Uh, because really almost every move you click with this thing uh, with the exception of toxic is 100% accurate So it really just kind of hurts you because it just makes your opponent's moves uh, Guaranteed to hit as well. So yeah, if someone clicks a fire blast against you, you're fucked. It's really annoying Yeah, dude, good low tier cheap still type really helped out the squad and I'm very glad to have it so it was at this point that uh, I went ahead and uh, took our sand setter. I'm sure you can guess what it is uh, I'll just go ahead and say it was Baby Hippo. So we went ahead and took Baby Hippo here. Uh, I definitely should have waited around on this and taken Cryogonal uh, now, but I did not. And it ended up biting me in the butt. Actually, I'm not sure if it did or not, because I actually really like the team without Cryogonal, but it's fine. Because uh, <laughs> it means we wouldn't have gotten our next Pokemon. But um, yeah, Baby Hippo is really nice. Uh, I took it around early because there was another team who had um, who has Drake Result. Uh, that was making jokes about not letting me get sand, so I didn't want to risk it, even though they already had their sand setter. I just, I, I, did, I didn't want to risk it, man. I went ahead and made sure we got sand for our fish, and that's really all that Baby Hippo is here to do. Uh, it's our second Stealth Rocker, so if it comes, it'll probably be our Stealth Rocker that week, and it'll probably come to a few games, just because uh, Dracovish and sand is broken, so. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, but yeah, Baby Hippo, Stealth Rock Setter, you know, it can click a um, uh, high, horse, high horse power if, you know, it's in terrain, so we don't have to run Earthquake. Uh, Whirlwind is nice. Yawn's nice. It's bulky and annoying. It actually has a really solid fist stuff. Uh, it's just this Spideff is very bad, so EV like can't really help with that, but, you know, it'll do. It'll do. We'll make, we'll make, we'll make it work. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's here for sand. And then next up, this was the uh, Pokemon, one of the other two Pokemon that I picked up after our transaction. So, like I said, I dropped Heliolisk. Um, a champ and Delibird. bird we picked up rotom fan hitmon lee is the next pokemon and our last pick so yeah hitmon lee uh really just glues this team together in such a nice way uh obviously it gives me a rapid spinner which is just something that is nice to have uh but it also gives me an unburdened user to go with our grassy terrain so hey that's fucking cool um hitmon lee i feel like is actually gonna be like a uh a um under the radar MVP candidate for this team because it's gonna be really hard for uh, opponents to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with this thing because uh, you know sometimes it could just be assault vest rapid spin with like you know limber or whatever or I could you know run the unburdened set and just win or you can never count out Reckless high jump kick just fucking teams up so yeah him only is a Pokemon I am very comfortable with used it many a time gotten many a kills with it done many a stupid thing with him only so. I'm very comfortable with it. Very happy to have it on the team once again. 
And yeah, great, great, great rapid spinner. By far the best of the Hitmons, and it's not even close. Fuck Hitmonchan, Hitmon Top's okay. But yeah, we, we, we've had enough of that discussion on this channel. And then with our last pick, needed a normal type and had 40 points left over. So yeah, it was the third part of our transactions. We went ahead and grabbed Audino. So Audino is decently bulky. Gives me a nice little regenerator Pokemon that can pivot around. Has actually ridiculous coverage. I did not realize this thing got the Gen 1 treatment. It has like everything, dude. Fire, fucking electric, ice, uh, grass not even, like knockoff. This thing's coverage is fucking ridiculous. Now, obviously it isn't strong, but like it gets like any type you need, man. If you if you need to slap on a super effective coverage move, fucking I don't know, got you, bro. It's got decent bulk, 103 HP, 86 defenses, and it's you know attack stats are pretty laughable at 60, but it's all right. Uh, good, uh, good uh, cleric. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not. I'm losing my my uh, voice because my throat is fucking drier than. I'm deciding if I want to make a sex joke or a desert joke, and I'm just gonna go with neither because I'm 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 not a child. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, good cleric with the heal bell healing wish as well as regular wish and yeah, it's just a fantastic um, You know budget pick that provides a really solid role that the team needs so Like I said, dude, I am super super happy with how this team turned out. I really could not have gone any better I am so excited to uh, Start playing games with this squad and it's gonna be hella fun So just to go over the team once again, we got Dracovish, Rillaboom, Victini Rabombi, Alolan Persian Nido King, Rotom Fan, The Blade, Hippopotas, Hitmonlee, and Audino. I'm so freaking ready, dude. This season is gonna be a hell of a lot of fun. Win, lose, or draw. I think we're actually, you know, gonna do a fair bit of winning this league, hopefully. Um, yeah, this draft just looks super fun. Let me know what you think my uh, record is gonna be. Again, 11 week season. We're gonna be playing every single coach in the league, so go check them out in the description down below. And uh, let me know what you think my kill leader is going to be. Better yet, let me know how many kills you think Dracovish is going to get. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all for week one when we play, I believe, daily. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we play daily week one. So be on the lookout for that and I'll catch you all then. Peace.